<laughs> if I had one fund to invest in, it'll be this one right here. And I can't wait to share this with you. This can be a step back in time for your old buddy Josh here at the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel because I'll give you the history of how I came to find this mutual fund. I don't own it. You should not own it. Don't own it. Don't buy it. I'm just telling you, if I had one fund to choose, it'd be this. And I'm going to share with you the reasons, not so much for the fund, but the history of uh, this in my life and also in Top's investment history as well. So you get a lot of good education out of this. So don't forget to subscribe, my friends. Uh, comments are always welcome, of course, and then hit the bell to be notified for future content. So let's dive into this. Uh, for uh, those crafty old veterans out there uh, who are experienced in the uh, world of investing, uh, this is the American Funds, the American Funds ICA Guide. And the ICA is the Investment Company of America. And let me just get that. There we go. Uh, and every year they produce this guide that, uh, that talks about the last year performance, but historically as well, going back from 1934. Got 84 years of uh, of <laughs> just solid results under its belt. It's amazing. But the funny thing is, it's not unique that they have a Pete Lynch or something like that who's running the show. It's not like that at all. Just tried and true conservative investment values with a value a tilt in U.S. domestic stocks. It's just it's amazing when you see how it works in the real world, which this is what it is. And this is as plain vanilla as a mutual fund as you could possibly get. It's three star rated. I think it's, uh, let's see, uh, three star. I was going to say, oh, it charge a front end commission. So you can pay a front end commission as high as five and a half to nothing, depending on how much money you put in there. It literally, it has a fee, I think, 0.45 or 0.5. So it's a lower fee, not like a Vanguard low, but certainly lower than most of this competition out there. But again, it's low because that's a front end commission. Anyway, let's go into it. I, I, man, I love this. Uh, here's a guy, James Lovelace, who founded American Funds. Uh, looks like an old old guy from the old days, which he was. I think I'm sure he's passed now. But anyway, uh, from Detroit. I'm not getting that, but anyway, it's just interesting. Uh, so what they talk about here with ICA is they give you the story of the investment world as it is and what you need to be prepared for, which is inflation. A postage stamp in 1934 was uh, $0.03, cents, now it's $0.50. Cents. Loaf of bread in 1934 was $0.07, cents, now it's a buck thirty-two, And you can see a single family home was less than 6000 now it's two fifty roughly. When Reagan was out inaugurated, a single family home in the good old U.S. of A was uh, 62000 Again, it's uh, two hundred fifty. So the issue is inflation is your big bear. And we're not even talking flaxes here, uh, taxes, we're just talking straight inflation. If you're not keeping up with inflation, uh, you're losing. That's, that's simply all there is to it. So let's keep, I keep going that way. All right, let's keep going down. They talk about stocks, bonds, and you, you know all this, but historically, stocks 10%, bonds 8 cash 5 and inflation 4 going back. And that's just from 1967 over the last 50 years. All right. So inflation uh, has kept up with cash uh, neck and neck for sure, but bonds have halved or inflation is half the rate of bonds. So, and they're using long-term bonds, I believe. Yeah. U.S. long-term government bonds. All right. All right. So here's the, the one thing that, man, I'm going to drink my coffee here. This right here changed everything for me. This right here, because before this time, in 1908, 19, uh, no, no, 2002 is when I first came across American funds. I had no clue what they were before that. I had always envisioned using the Vanguard Ginny May. I always, I worked at Vanguard and we had Ginny Mays paying roughly 6% back then in 1980, uh, 1998, 97, something like that, 99. And I said, if I could have a million bucks when I retire, I throw it all in the Ginny May and just live off the interest. That's what I always thought. So I'd get $60,000 a year and never tap in the principal. And then I came across this from American Funds, the ICA guide. The boons and the classes, the same people going back. We're going 15, something like that, 20. Yeah, 20 years now. Uh, so 20 years ago, at the end of 1997, the Claussens, or the Boons here, these are the Boons, uh, put their money in a 20-year U.S. government bond that paid 6%. Wow, how similar does that sound? Like your old buddy Josh with his Ginny May fund. <laughs> They were satisfied with their safe investment uh, annual income getting $12,040 a year. 20 years ago, you may have been able to buy, uh, get by on that $12,000 a year, but now it takes $18,400 to buy the same amount that $12,000 did in 1998. Even worse, when the bonds matured in 2000, 2017, they went to go buy another one and realized that the rate on the new 20-year treasury was 2.58, which would only give them $5,160 a year, which is less than a third in terms of purchasing power than what they were accustomed to when they first bought this 20 years previously. 
Of course, the bonds are guaranteed their original $200,000, but that won't buy as much either because inflation has dipped into that as well. The bonds, uh, the Boone's safe investment is seen wasn't so safe after all. So $200,000 original investment, they took two forty dollars out as income because you don't reinvest in individual bonds. It comes as income that they're spending. And 20 years later, they got $200,000. And here's the shows their income, $12,000, 12000 12000 Now we're going to talk about the closets. And here's Vivian and Joe. All right, so they start with $200,000. They invest that into the Income Fund of America, this fund right here, which is a uh, all stock. It's really 10%, not quite all stock, but it's 90% stocks. A domestic stock fund, and they take 5% a year each and every year out, which means they took 10000 the first year, uh, which is 5% of their original investment. And you can see their income fluctuates. So in 2003, when the markets were getting tanked after the 2001 and two, they're only taking 9000 out. 2008, they're taking 13, then we got hit, killed again. Now we're back up to 14,595. Uh, so they took 228,000 in total withdrawals, which is just a shy, a shy amount under there. They took 12,000 less in total withdrawals, but they have 330,000 in total account balance. So essentially they have 110,000 in their account more than what the, uh, the Boons do did, even though they only took just a little bit less out. And so now where the Boons are getting $5,000 because they're getting on a 20 year treasury is paying a 2.58. These guys, and that's guaranteed. I mean, there's no getting around that. These guys, the Claussons are gonna get 5% of 328. And they're going to get uh, 16400 this year. Now, that is not guaranteed, but that's three times what the what the Boons are getting. Uh, and it's, even if it goes down by 40%, so 328 uh, minus 40%, they're still going to have 196 in there, so they're still going to get 10000 bucks. So even if the account drops in value by half, they're still going to get twice, twice what the Boons are getting simply because that's the way the equity markets worked. And this was in a... Uh, well, I'll point it out to you later, but this is literally the worst 20 year history of the ICA. So the, all the 20 years they've had, there's 84 years of all the 20 years, they've, you know, the 20 year track records. This from 1998 to 2017 was the worst performance of the ICA. So this is the worst case scenario that the ICA has ever shown anybody. Uh, they show what the uh, hypothetical ten thousand dollar investment in the ISA just gives it shows the diverse nature of the uh, the portfolio. Nine thousand individual stocks, fifteen bucks in bonds and notes, and nine thousand um, and uh, nine hundred in uh, cash. So essentially, uh, nine. 91% stocks and the 9.5% cash and bonds. All right. So investing in uh, stocks requires skill. They told you about you could invest in 1,000 in 1980 and 1934, 1,000 in each of five companies in the Dow back then. Like here's Goldman Sachs, was replaced by Bank of America, which replaced Altria, which is previously known as uh, Philip Morris, which replaced General Foods. So you can see all this. So they're saying you could invest in uh, 1,000 in any of these five stocks. What would it have been? All right, so now if we go forward, we'll see that ICA, $1,000 is worth $1.295 million today, where nothing even comes close. So the closest you would have came to the investment company in America with your $1,000 would have been Procter & Gamble, which is only worth $912,000. So even if you took the top five performers, one, two, three, four, five, uh, that would have been, what, two, uh, C6, Let's say what two, two and a half, maybe three million, and this would have been five, almost six, you know, five, about six million dollars. So the ICA, even if you would have picked the best five performers, ICA would have dwarfed what your portfolio would. Uh, so a thousand in each of these five stocks, or five thousand in the ICA, it would have been close. Um, now they're excluding dividends here, which is interesting because we're going to talk about dividends here in just a second. And it's funny because I keep the, uh, the these PDF files as much as I possibly can. And there was a couple years where GE was way at the top and Exxon Mobil was way. It's just interesting how the, the individual performers change, but the ICA never does. It's always at the top. I think there was one year where ICA was not at the top. I think it might be GE that's at the top, actually, but I can't remember. But anyway, it's just interesting. Every year they do this. Every year I try to save it because I find it interesting. I mean, so a thousand bucks invested in the 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 Caterpillar and his predecessors is worth $13,000 today. So not a huge amount. Now that's without dividends too, by the way. So let's go over here and keep going. Uh, what happens if the stock market doesn't go up? So ICA's professional management uh, has, has 
essentially destroyed the S&P 500. And even when the markets are flat from 1966 to basically 1982 with a flat stock market, and all the naysayers of stocks will say, what happened in 1966 to 1982 was price to price or in this annuities. If you see these annuities, indexed annuities or an index life insurance point to point. And so from a point to point perspective, we're going back to the, uh, the Dow. Uh, let's see. Uh, the S&P 500 began 1968 at 96.47. A decade later, it stood less than that at 96.11. However, if you would have reinvested dividends, it would have grown to $15,000. So that's a 50% increase on your $10,000 investment, even though the point to point amount, the price share, the prices did not change at all. So that's the problem with not reinvesting dividends and bonds, you can't reinvest dividends. Uh, same thing in the ICA would have grown to 18,344 with dividends reinvested. Uh, before the 2007 and 8 decline, the market had been relatively flat for the previous eight years. However, a hypothetical uh, investment in the ICA with dividends reinvested would have averaged an annual total of 4.8%, uh, whereas the S&P only 1.7. So basically from 2000 to the end of 2008 was pretty much a, a flat market. The S&P 500 was at 1469 at the end of 2000, at the end of 2007, at the beginning of 2000, it was at 1469. At the end of 2007, it was at 1468. So again, flat to flat, price to price, or point to point, depending on your perspective. However, with dividends reinvested, it would have been worth 1.7. And for the ICA, it would have been worth 4.8. So let's pause there. I'll come back to follow, do part two of the Investment Company of America guide, which I just love. And I'll share with you some more. Thanks, guys.